Hello, good evening, and welcome to Sans Films and Sans Films Cinema Club. Uh, it's Tuesday, the 19th of May, 2020. Uh, it's 8 o'clock, and it's time for the Film Club. Uh, we are under the uh, pandemic lockdown, and that is why we're continuing to deliver the Film Club online. Um, and I continue to uh, speak to this empty theatre in the hope that there are a few people watching at home. Um, the situation at Science Films is that we are actually doing other things than just the film club. And in fact, this Friday, the 22nd, I strongly invite you to see another presentation. This time will be a live performance, a, a theatre performance on this stage. Uh, based on the writing of Charles Dickens and its relevance to today. Um, due to the pandemic, of course, there'll be only one actor, although you might see more than one, but there will only be one. Um, and, uh, we, and later during the later this month, we will uh, do some music recording, which is why the setup here is slightly different, because they were rehearsing this morning and there will be a music concert being delivered also online through a new program of Music Room at Sands Films. But tonight is a film club, and um, I will show you a silent film uh, from Soviet Russia. Um, so the idea of a silent film of 1927 from uh, Soviet Russia probably conjures up uh, the idea of a heavy propaganda communist film about heroic uh, sailors uh, promoting the Bolshevik Revolution or something like that. In fact, the Soviet uh, cinema of that period was much more varied than this, and there was many, many comedies, many, many films were produced. The, the Soviet cinema had been uh, nationalized at, 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 in each republic, and each republic were um, producing a large number of films. And because they were silent, they could travel from one republic to another, regardless of the um, language uh, difference. And they were very, very, very popular. Obviously, uh, it, was, it was an art form which had been promoted by, the, by, the, by Lenin's government as being if you like, not uh, connected with the past, not connected with the, with the uh, bourgeois tradition, and therefore it was part of the new world, of the new, uh, the new Soviet ideal society. And it was promoted as an image of modernity and, a mod and, an, and an image of, um, of uh, also of popular entertainment. So, and, and of means of communication. So there was many films. There was a extraordinarily. Uh, it was uncensored. It was very very free. There was even uh, a completely autonomous Yiddish uh, uh, studio, and they were producing a vast variety of films. Um, in the West, um, we 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 are mostly aware of the political output of those studios because that is the um, that's the f those are the films that the uh, Western uh, critics were more m mostly aware of um, now uh, the film we're about to see is by Boris Barnett and Boris Barnett is also a name which is very unfamiliar and that's why I'm very keen to include him in uh, in the programming of the the film club Boris Barnett is very Russian, although he has this very British name, and that's because his grandfather or great-grandfather came to Russia in the 1840s as a printer and brought with him his British name. But uh, Boris himself is a truly integrated Russian chap, uh, born in 1902, so he's a little bit too young to get involved in the uh, Russian Revolution or in the First World War, but when he's 18, uh, 1920, he joined the Red Army and he, um, he is trained through them. So he learned a number of things through the Red Army and one of the things he becomes is 
becomes a boxer. He becomes actually um, a professional boxer. Uh, this was promoted alongside cinema. There was the, the, what the Soviet um, were very keen to promote was cinema, circus, the circus arts, and all the sports, because all the sports, including boxing, of course, was a, a means of exchanging between the nations and promoting the image of uh, Soviet Russia. So anyway, Boris Bornet becomes a boxer, and a very strong, he's actually a champion, and he will uh, win some champion uh, championships and things. Um, but because he's very strong in that, he completely by accident get involved um, with filmmaking as a stunt artist. He gets hired by uh, Lev Kuleshov, who is one of the pioneers of Soviet cinema, and it is through that experience that he get involved with films. First as an actor, as a stunt artist, doing unbelievable uh, stunt, and then as a co-director, and eventually he will do his, his uh, films. And in fact, the film we will see tonight is his first feature film. It's a comedy. Um, uh, there is so much I could tell you about this that I would be here talking for hours, and obviously this is not the point. But um, one thing that I should put in the context for this film is that, um, so it's 1927, and the action takes place in Moscow. And it's the period of the, it's, uh, when it's, it's called the NEP, it's the new economic policies. So there is an element of free market and free enterprise, while at the same time the states demand citizens to uh, do certain things under the uh, communist logic. One of the big issues in Moscow at that, at that time is the lack of housing. There is a huge housing shortage. And the comedy, the, the, the storyline of the film, center around this, is that the, the millionaire, the young girl, the, the girl with the hat box, um, is employed by a, a hat uh, shop uh, in Moscow. They are themselves. Uh, bourgeois people who had the shop before the revolution and who employ this young girl and they pretend to supply her with their spare room. Everyone in Moscow with a spare room is obliged to rent it out to somebody rather than keep it for themselves. And that is the center point of the story is that the girl is quite happy to pretend she's renting it because she'd rather stay with her father uh, in the outskirts until the day that she actually um, needs the space and hence the, the comedy is around, is, uh, is around this point. Um, so uh, it's a wonderful, very lively, very bouncy uh, story. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'm going to start my machine and I will come back to tell you more about it at the end.
Красотки, 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 кабры, вы созданы для меня наслаждений. Красотки, красотки, красотки. Thank you. 
Dios.
Thank you. 
Right, so that was uh, the girl with the hat box. Um, as I mentioned, it's the, it's the first feature film that Boris Barnett made. Um, he will go on making even greater, better films. I mean, better. I mean, he will he yet to make his masterpiece. There's at least two, if not three, films which are huge mastership, master, masterpiece. One is uh, The House on Trubiana Square, which is another silent film, also dealing more or less with the housing shortage in Moscow. Um, and then a later film, his first talkie, which is in 1933, uh, which is called Ukraina, which is an anti-war film, and it's an extraordinary film. Most of uh, Boris Barnett's film have a female character at the center of their storylines, and he's remarkably sensitive, and, and um, he, he portrays women with completely outside and beyond the usual stereotypes. He always has um, very strong female characters who are all absolutely delightful and uh, very um, and, and, and triggers in, in our hearts of so tremendous admiration. Uh, the girl with the hat box is one of them. The girl in um, Trubiana Square is the same, is also extraordinary. The girl in Ukraine is heartbreaking um, and it's it's always the case that he has really the knack of portraying women in a wonderful wonderful way um, so I hope you like Boris Barnett do I would love it. Boris Barnett to this day is very difficult to know um, he was not an intellectual he did not write articles he didn't teach he didn't write books he there is no work by him or about him um, so he's a very elusive character who yet made quite a few films. He went on working until 1966 um, and, and he, uh, he should be much, much better known. Anyway, thank you for this. Join us on Friday back on this stage to see some Dickens now uh, and next week for another film club. Thank you very much and goodbye.